whether we're here in person or whether we're joining online, thank you that you want to minister a blessing to each of our hearts. Help us to gaze into the face of Jesus and experience your love, your transforming power as never before. And thank you for the precious gift of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It is so nice to look out and see my Clinton Church family. I may have only missed one Tuesday night, but it seems like it has been forever. And it is so good. Was it two? I think it was two. That's right, because I was at summer camp and uh, and then at the uh, uh, pastor's conference uh, in Kentucky, and now it's good to be back home. How is my church family? How many, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being Jesus is coming in the clouds and we are headed to heaven, 1 being the opposite, um, Jesus coming and we're not headed to heaven, um, where would you be? How many fingers describe how you are, where, where, how you would describe today? All right. I know what I want to say. Okay. I'm not sure. Uh-huh. Well, all right. Well, when, when, when Jesus is in our heart, it is a foretaste of what it will be like when he comes in glory. And so it's, uh, it's never too early to start celebrating what Jesus has in store. And yet tonight we're backing up. And are we on chapter 79 tonight? Is that correct? Are we, uh, what's that? Or are we on 79 or 80? I, I wasn't... Uh, uh, the YouTube channel showed that we did 78 last week, and is it 79 tonight? Okay, um, some of the topics overlap, but tonight's study is anchored in a single verse. Not a single chapter, a single verse. And, and the part of the verse that anchors and titles and carries through this whole chapter is only three words long. And I dare say everyone has memorized it. But let's go to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. I will tell a miracle story as, uh, as we are turning there. Last Tuesday night. I was having the privilege of hanging out in the prayer ministries uh, room for the conference. So anybody that wanted prayer could stop there and uh, uh, a prayer team uh, would be uh, available to pray with them or uh, uh, to visit, to encourage. And it was just my privilege to float in and out uh, as, as uh, things would allow it. And uh, this young man stood in the doorway. I was actually, I think, praying with uh, uh, one of our directors, and we were just winding to a close. And I looked up, and there's this young man. If I uh, showed uh, you his picture, I don't know if you would recognize him. He is an Adventist pastor up in Michigan. But I learned today that his grandfather used to pastor this church. And so it's such a small, uh, small world. And uh, uh, I found out, uh, uh, what's that? Uh, no, um, uh, and since this is being recorded, I'll share the name at another time. Uh, but uh, come see me because I, I think, uh, uh, actually, no, I can share it. Thank you. I stand corrected because I can share it. I do have permission. And uh, the last name is McAnally. So I, I think that goes back a, a few days. And, uh, and the, the reason I'm sharing is the, the multi ways. God, what are the odds that uh, just as I'm concluding one prayer, here's, uh, here's a grandson that had been, we'd been trying to connect all week long. And uh, we finally, finally did. 
And uh, what he did not share, and I didn't learn until Sabbath, and perhaps he didn't even know, I don't know, was that Brother Don was standing just a little ways up off of the ground, I think just in the past few days or week, and uh, took a tumble and broke his neck. And so from what I understand, by God's mercy, he is still uh, very much able to function, but uh, is, of course, being treated for, uh, uh, for that fracture. And so please keep him, uh, even in his retirement years, uh, in extra special prayer. And, uh, and pray for the other neat, uh, uh, neat miracles that God is, is working uh, in, their, in their life and family. The reason it's fun to talk about miracles just today, I was handed this piece of paper, and, I, and I'm not going to show the handwriting because it's anonymous, but it was found by the team when they arrived here, so I don't know if somebody dropped it Sabbath or, uh, uh, or if somebody planted it hoping it would be found, but two sentences, I am struggling. Please pray for me. And I dare say any family could adopt that prayer because what family is, uh, is uh, able to say we're struggling and we would like extra prayer? I, I think that could be all of us. And that is precisely the reason tonight's verse is so powerful. So let's, let's go to John chapter 19. Let's go to verse 30. John chapter 19 and verse 30. And if we want to read it as a big choir, that, uh, that would be great. I'm reading from King James. It says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. Last week, Brother Jerry took us to the foot of Calvary. If that's my understanding, you were leading out last week. We were studying chapter 78. and We watched Jesus being crucified. I can't read these chapters without it doing something right here. Need a box of Kleenex nearby. And yet... Uh, reading from tonight's chapter in the second paragraph, it says, To the angels and the unfallen worlds, the cry, it is finished, had a deep significance. It was for them as well as for us that the great work of redemption had been accomplished. They with us share the fruits of Christ's victory. Not until the death of Christ was the character of Satan clearly revealed to the angels or to the unfallen worlds. The archapostate had so clothed himself with deception that even holy beings had not understood his principles. Oh, but backing up to the first paragraph, all heaven triumphed in the Savior's victory. Satan was defeated and knew that his kingdom was lost. How many want to say praise the Lord for that good news? That good news. But even though this chapter is based on just one short little verse, in fact, three words out of that one verse, there are no less than 17 other verses or 16 other verses that uh, we can connect with. And uh, so just for fun, let's, uh, let's begin looking them up. And uh, um, Ms. Sharon, do you mind taking us to Matthew 26, 39? And perhaps, uh, Miss June, would you mind taking us to Luke 23, 34? And uh, we will get through those two first. Matthew 26, verse 39. Matthew 
26, 39. Here comes the microphone. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, nor as I will, but as you will. Mm, mm. Why would that verse be relevant to what we're studying here about the final conquest of Satan's forces, the complete... Um, uh, uh, not not even close, just an overwhelming victory that our Savior won on Calvary's cross. Satan won nothing. Satan won nothing. A amen. That's right. That's right. In the in the course of triumphing, God's kingdom didn't lose an inch. Jesus came forth the complete conqueror. And yet, as the Father's presence was withdrawn, they saw Jesus sorrowful with a bitterness of sorrow exceeding that of the last great struggle with death. Can you see the bloody sweat coming from our Savior falling in drops to the ground? That prayer for deliverance coming from his lips. Heaven could no longer endure the sight. And a messenger of comfort was sent to the Son of God. Heaven is watching all of this final cataclysmic struggle. Heaven viewed with grief and amazement Christ hanging above the cross. From his hands and feet the blood fell drop by drop upon the rock drilled for the foot of the cross. The wounds made by the nails gaped as the weight of his body drug upon his hands. And yet, you've looked up Luke 23, 34. Help us out. Here comes the mic. Luke 23, 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Wow. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus is praying this, and yet there stands men formed in the image of God, joining to crush out the life of our precious Jesus. Oh, but as we contemplate the solemnness and the heart-wrenching agony, which really, it was pain and suffering, no, no doubt about it, and yet, as I think was pointed out last week, the, the really intense agony and the biggest painful burden was not the nails and was not the whipping and was not the, the thorns. It was the weight of sin that he's carrying for all of us. And yet, let's travel. Uh, Ms. Holly, do you mind picking us up at Revelation chapter 12, verse 10? Revelation 12, verse 10, because right I love this verse. Right here on page 761 in okay. the first full paragraph. Yes. So can I read the whole paragraph? Why, sure, Absolutely. Could one sin have been found in Christ had he in one particular yielded to Satan to escape the terrible torture, the enemy of God and man would have triumphed. Christ bowed his head and died, but he held fast his faith and his submission to God. Beautiful language. Quote, I love following the, the narrative in Desire of Ages. But here, can you picture John the Revelator on the island of Patmos getting what we're about to hear straight from, uh, from the heavenly revelation? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, 
which accuse them before our God day and night. May I add something from the page before? Oh, please, please. I do. noticed on page 759. Mm -hmm. um, what? One, two, third full paragraph. It said basically Satan tried everything to prevent Jesus from a perfect childhood, faultless manhood, holy ministry, and blemish sacrifice, but he couldn't lead Jesus to sin. But here's a prescription for us. Uh, Satan's wrath basically was constant. The more mercilessly Satan's wrath fell, the more firmly did the Son of God cling to the hand of his Father and press on in the blood-stained path. Mm. That just tells me the more we feel opposed, the mm. prescription Jesus gives is hold on tighter. Amen. And that's just beautiful. So we all know that we're opposed. Mm. Hold on tighter. And then our character will be revealed. Mm. Amen. Amen. All the efforts of Satan to oppress and overcame, uh, overcome him only brought out in a pure light his spotless character. Do you want to be clothed with that tonight? He would love to take away our sins and clothe us in his robe of righteousness. The recipe is the same. Clinging tighter and tighter to Jesus is the only way to receive it and keep it. Yes, Satan saw his disguise torn away. And if we keep, uh, there, there's so much more. If we turn uh, to page 762, we're going to catch three different verses and three different paragraphs. So maybe we can bounce to the second row. And uh, 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 Brother Jimmy, do you mind taking 2 Corinthians 5.19 since the mic is near you? And then maybe uh, uh, Sister Tammy, would you mind taking Romans 3.26? And uh, then maybe uh, Miss Sheila, would you be able to take Psalms 85 verse 10? And we'll start with uh, Brother Jimmy. 2 Corinthians 5.19 To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Mm. Amen. I, I should keep my mouth shut because I talk too much as it is, but what about that verse spoke to your heart this week as you studied this chapter anything in particular or or as you hear it just now how does it connect with the topic of tonight's chapter i'm worse than a little kid that can't keep a secret i i, I remember one mother's day uh and we wanted to get something for mom, and uh, I just was so excited. I could not bear to keep that secret. I had to tell her how special it was, what we had, and all of this. And uh, I don't think she was the least bit surprised when it finally came out. But uh, uh, it, it's hard to keep. But what, what, what speaks to your heart from these verses? Going back to 762, a couple of nuggets that spoke to me, mercy, mercy does not set aside justice. God did not change his law, but he sacrificed himself in Christ for our redemption. God could have changed his law. Jesus wouldn't have needed to come. But he made the ultimate sacrifice. Romans. Who's got Romans? Yes. Romans three twenty six. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, 
that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Mm. He wants, he wants so much to save us. Amen. Amen. So true. Christ imbues men with attributes of God. Thus, the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in believers in Christ. This is a powerful paragraph. The law requires righteousness, a righteous life, perfect character, and uh, we all fall short there. He cannot meet the claims of God's holy law, but Christ, coming to the earth as man, lived a holy life, developed a perfect character. These he offers as a free gift to the first few who will receive. Oh, what's that? All. I love that word. All. To all who will receive. He doesn't force it. You know, the choice is up to us. But he offers that free gift to all who will receive them. His life stands for the life of men. Thus, they have remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. More than this, Christ imbues men with the attributes of God. He builds up the human character after the similitude of the divine character a goodly fabric of spiritual strength and beauty. And thus, the very righteousness of the law is fulfilled in the believer in Christ. Isn't that amazing? Good news. It is finished to the disciples, uh, drawing from other, other uh, areas in the Desire of Ages. They were devastated. This is the end. Their faith was obliterated. Now, they'd never had they loved Jesus more. Their love was stronger. But their faith in uh, him was devastated when he said, it's finished. Done. Oh, but in heaven's eyes, three words of triumph. What good news. Psalms 8510. Miss Sheila, what do you have for us? Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mm. God's love. Anything you want to add to that? Hope. Hope? Gives me hope. Amen. Amen. Good news. God's love has been expressed in his justice, no less than in his mercy. Justice is the foundation of his throne and the fruit of his love. It had been Satan's purpose to divorce mercy from truth and justice. He sought to prove that the righteousness of God's law is an enemy to peace. Oh, but Christ shows that in God's plan they are in this. I can't say this next word. I hope somebody's there. In, you made that sound so easy. Uh, thank you. I need to just record that because the, uh, there are certain words in the English language that don't come off my tongue quite right. Uh, this tinfoil paper that you wrap things up in can be called what kind of paper? Starts with an A. I, that, that word. I, ever since I was a kid, I have trouble saying that. And this is another one like it. In this, uh, I'm sorry. How do you say it again? One more time. In, so to translate it, that would mean it doesn't break apart, right? It does not dissolve. So, 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 absolutely, yes. Christ shows that God's in God's plan that they are. What would that be? Okay. 
All of these things, yes, yes. Mercy, truth, justice are all joined together. The one cannot exist without the other. Hence that verse. By his life and his death, Christ proved that God's justice did not destroy his mercy, but that sin could be forgiven and that the law is righteousness and can be perfectly obeyed. Mm. Awesome stuff. Um, who are we leaving out? Miss Dorothy, do you want to grab James 2.10? James chapter 2, verse 10. And then, Miss Janine, do you want to take uh, Daniel 7, 25? James chapter 2, going to verse 10. James 2, verse 10. James 2, 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Mm. Wow. Let's pair that up with Daniel 7, 25. Going back to that great prophetic chapter, Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High Think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand till a time and times in the dividing of times. That sounds like something Satan would do. <laughs> He's been attacking God's law since the very beginning, hasn't he? And yet, here we are traveling down through the centuries. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Malachi 4, verse 1 gives us a picture of this triumph. Last book of the Old Testament. Last chapter of the Old Testament. First verse of that chapter, Malachi 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. In other words, the end will come. There will be consequences to abrogating the law of God. But Miss Mary, and welcome, thank you for joining us. Let's go to Psalms 3710. Psalms 37, verse 10. Psalms 37, verse 10. And can you do 11 as well? 10 and 11. Psalms 37, 10 and 11. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in abundance of peace. Amen. 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 Now we are getting a picture through these verses of the controversy that's been raging and of the final removal of sin. Mm. Two more verses, if we've got just a moment before uh, we have an early uh, conclusion tonight. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians 4 and verse 18. Somebody's going to need to do double duty. I'll just ask for a volunteer. We won't put anyone on the spot. Thank you so much, Miss Sharon. 
Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. Have their understanding darkened, being altered, alternated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Mm. We're seeing a very pivotal contrast. Darkness, blindness, defeat, mercy, truth, God's covenant, victory. One more verse, Proverbs 8, 36. Proverbs 8, 46, 36. Proverbs 8, 36. Proverbs 8. I won't pair, what, 836 is the verse coming from the chapter, but then just across the page is chapter 9, verse 10. We'll pair those two verses together. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Mm -hmm. All they that hate me love death. Mm -hmm. Did you want? The and other? then 9, verse 10, chapter 9, The verse fear 10. of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Wow. Wow. Yes. The chapter makes the same point. The Bible makes the same point in the top paragraph on 764. Okay. That cause and effect, if we're not connected to God. Mm-hmm. And we're choosing sin, then we have cut ourselves off from life so that's what it says what June just read you know we sin against our own soul mm -hmm. if we hate the ways mm -hmm. of God and people want to assign different explanations to God mm -hmm. that he doesn't punish or whatever but mm -hmm. it's not him choosing it's just us choosing I was doing some household chores running a vacuum cleaner and all of a sudden, the vacuum cleaner stopped. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out, what did I do to break this machine? And I follow the cord, and what had happened? Got unplugged. It don't work well when it's unplugged. Neither do Christians when they're unplugged from our source. Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. I want to be connected with Jesus. And this chapter concludes beautifully by saying at the beginning of the great controversy, the angels didn't understand all of this. And, uh, and, and, and so it will be completely different when the great controversy shall have been ended. The, the plan of redemption having been completed, the character of God being revealed to all created intelligences, the precepts of God's law being seen to be perfect and immutable, sin has made manifest its nature. Satan is character. And the extermination of sin will vindicate God's love and establish his honor before a universe of beings who delight to do his will and in whose heart is what? His law. Do you want his law written in our hearts? The law of love, the law of truth, the law of purity and holiness his character. Amen. Father in heaven, we are thankful that you are willing to give us a brand new heart, that you are willing to write your law in our hearts, and that through your grace and power, we can live to your honor and glory, not to serve ourselves, but to honor your name. And tonight, Lord, we ask that as we leave this house of worship, that your presence will go with us, that your love will shine through us, and that when you come in the clouds of glory, we would be found faithful because our eyes are fixed on you. 
thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Next week, we continue our journey.